the waters rise. The banks are breached. Men and women are swept away as a great flood of biblical proportions inundates everything. The deluge comes without warning. Or does it? A painting, a sketch, a poem. These are clues that may promise total annihilation. For thousands of years, prophets around the world have predicted the end of days. More than one suggests the apocalypse is fast approaching. We call this theoretical convergence between doomsday prophecies and today's events the Nostradamus effect. Water. Our planet is almost completely covered by this precious resource. Without it, man cannot survive. But Leonardo da Vinci, master painter, scientist, and engineer, was obsessed with it. He could see that at the end of the day, if nature decided to do something big, we could do nothing about it. It's not surprising that one would hope for an end of days, a last time, something where good would defeat bad. New evidence suggests that Leonardo foretold of an enormous deluge that will flood the world and destroy mankind. His warnings may be hidden in codes and symbols that secretly permeate his masterpieces. We will investigate the belief by some that today's increasingly violent hurricanes, tornadoes and earthquakes are signs that coincide with his warnings of a coming global catastrophe. We will neither refute nor endorse these theories, merely present the evidence. Leonardo's belief in the awesome power of the natural world, especially water, influenced his engineering feats, fueled his intellectual pursuits, and colored his art. Some believe it may have also triggered apocalyptic prophecies. Circa 1482, Leonardo wrote, Rafts and other contrivances on which were jumbled men, women, and children, terrified by the fury of the winds, which rolled the waters over, under, and around the corpses of the drowned. The words are very powerful, they're very vivid. They are a warning. There's no doubt that Leonardo had an apocalyptic frame of mind. And he wasn't alone in that. And at the time he was painting, there were widespread fears of an apocalyptic event about to occur, to the point where people expected some kind of vast deluge. Those who follow Leonardo suggest there is a symbolic code in his works. Was this master painter a forerunner to his fellow prophet, Michel de Nostradamus? Was Leonardo secretly warning future generations of their fate? I think he always felt himself to be in a process of discovery. He had not reached any clear conclusions about things and so uh, was hesitant to perhaps talk about these things to, to others. Clues to Leonardo's cryptic visions may be found by examining more closely the dark era in which he lived in Italy. During Leonardo's age, the 15th and 16th centuries, belief in horrific images of the world's end, as described in the Book of Revelation, had intensified throughout Western Europe. Leonardo on the years either side of 1500 is living in one of the most extraordinary times in European history. Enormous turbulence. Europe was emerging from the Dark Ages into the light of exploration and discovery and the all-powerful Catholic Church was just beginning to feel the first inklings of the Protestant Reformation that would split Christianity in the West. These tumultuous times surely affected and influenced Leonardo, where even the power of nature presented a formidable threat and danger. Florence, Italy, 1466. A young Leonardo da Vinci witnesses a massive flood of the Arno River. 
Did he possibly see crops washed away? Buildings destroyed? Bloated bodies floating in the waters? It may have been that early experience. Perhaps it kind of left him fascinated by this idea of what water can do. A normally passive river suddenly rises up over its banks and uh, floods the city and causing destruction. Leonardo would develop a lifelong fascination with water. Researchers conclude that the Arno flooding may have been the cause. The raw power of nature may have also taught Leonardo about the dynamics of water erosion and flow velocity. In the years to follow, he searched for clues to harness the immense power of water, and at the same time documented his fear of its destructive force. Some interpreters of Leonardo's work suspect these little-known passages in his private journals are warnings of environmental catastrophe for our time. All the waters dashing on their shores seem to be battling them with the blows of drowned bodies. Did Leonardo see in nature's terrible, unrelenting power a clue to man's destiny? Did he foresee the modern world destroyed by a flood? Much like the biblical flood that wiped away the sins of mankind in the book of Genesis. I will send rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. This vivid prophecy from the Old Testament is echoed across time and in other cultures. The Epic of Gilgamesh from Babylon also refers to an apocalyptic deluge that destroys mankind. A mythic Chinese emperor founded the first dynasty only after he was able to divert floodwaters that reached to the heavens. Hopi tradition speaks of a devastating torrent that wipes out a corrupt people. Interpreters of prophecy suggest that all of these floods mirror environmental catastrophe taking place around the world today. The only question, then and now, is how much time do they believe we have to heed the warning? Leonardo's most famous creations, including The Last Supper and the Mona Lisa, each filled with intricate complexity and symbolism, suggest he knew and hid the answer. The thing about Leonardo, when you step into his work as an artist, you're stepping into a very problematic world. With every Leonardo painting, everything that he does, it's never clear. Leonardo appears to use symbolic images in his paintings to communicate multiple ideas. There are some drawings where the people's hair seems to be like a storm, you know, it's just an extraordinary vortex of, of turbulent curls. It becomes a, a kind of trait of Leonardo. We don't really know what Leonardo's reason was for including that kind of detail. And I suppose this keeps art historians, at the very least, busy. Was Leonardo leaving statements that foretell the exact manner in which the world will end? wiped out by rising sea levels and geologic upheaval? He wrote, Seawater will rise above the high peaks of mountains towards the sky and will fall down again onto the dwellings of men. Leonardo called these writings his riddles. Today, many call them his prophecies. All round may be seen venerable trees, uprooted and stripped by the fury of the winds. The swollen rivers overflow and submerge the wide lowlands and their inhabitants. What might Leonardo's prophecies reveal? And why did he go to great lengths to disguise so many of his beliefs in his work? To understand his doomsday prophecy, we must first take a closer look at Leonardo da Vinci, the man. If 
you wanted to reconstruct the figure of Leonardo nowadays, you would need probably 20 of what we call scientists. And then on top of that, a wonderful artist, a wonderful painter, the combination of all these would make a Leonardo. His great gift was one of observation on the one hand and of representation on the other hand. That is to say he could see things with a depth and in a detail that other people couldn't. But being inquisitive, creative and willful at this time in Italy, with an authoritative and powerful Catholic Church, was considered sacrilege, even unsafe. And Leonardo was smart enough to know it. I'm sure that it was very difficult to progress where an authoritative church and authoritative society was attempting to impose rules and dogmas that don't go hand in hand with scientific inquiry and personal experience. To keep his writings secret from prying authorities, Leonardo wrote his journals in cryptic, backwards handwriting that could only be deciphered with a mirror. He could do almost anything with his hands, so that was easy for him to do. But obviously, if he wrote them that way, nobody was meant to read them but him. This seemed the only way Leonardo could explore his passion for science and engineering. With 16th century Italy a virtual battlefield, he found creative opportunities in designing weapons of war. Would Leonardo be able to harness the power of water and turn it against his enemies? Does a secret 500-year-old prophecy warn that our modern world will be destroyed by a great flood? And is the prophet someone unexpected? Not the notorious seer Nostradamus, but painter and engineer Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo lived in very turbulent times. It's hardly surprising that he also had a very apocalyptic attitude. Leonardo's life's work seems to point to floods in hidden codes and symbols. Researchers say these symbols may be converging with earlier visions of deluge prophecy from other cultures. Did Leonardo envision that the melting of today's polar ice caps, 500 years before global warming, would become a major threat? Is this convergence proof of the Nostradamus effect? A theory suggesting that past prophecy is colliding with today's cataclysms to usher in the end of everything. To his followers, Leonardo was keenly aware of the power and peril inherent in nature. He was observing with interest where that balance wasn't kept in the right sort of proportion, and where things got out of balance, where he observed and wrote about the disasters and what was likely to happen if that balance wasn't kept. Leonardo's secretive nature, combined with his curiosity, may have prompted him to take a closer look at his own and mankind's dark side. He was not that interested in human nature per se. He was interested in human character and personality as it was exhibited through behavior. I think Leonardo instead was interested in nature, nature, if you like. Leonardo's reputation as a gifted engineer grew while he was living in Milan in 1485. Soon he was designing groundbreaking weapons, killing machines that, if constructed, would have given his patrons a distinct advantage during an exceptionally violent era. Italy was less a country and more a mix of city-states, each with its own enemies. Clashes and small wars were a constant. So it's absolutely chaos and instability. Leonardo would have seen death all around him much more frequently than, than we do, just as a natural course of things. He was paid good money by his employers to make war machines and also to design fortifications. The roles of these weapons intrigued him, and his fascination with controlling natural forces grew as a result. A flying machine that would conquer the sky, a submarine that would defy the ocean depths. 
Leonardo was among the first to imagine many of the weapons we use today to annihilate one another. It's like nuclear age in a way. People thought, well, we could actually destroy the world. Some researchers believe he saw these attempts at dominating nature as a way to combat his fear of its destructive power, even its ultimate devastation of mankind. He was a great visionary and futurist. The idea of engineering and technology and invention, I mean, we take that for granted, but those ideas didn't exist. Did Leonardo use his apocalyptic visions of a deluge to inspire his most destructive weapons of war? While living in Florence, Leonardo proposed putting his knowledge of hydrodynamics to good use. He suggested diverting the Arno River, the very same river that had overflowed in his youth, away from rival city Pisa. He writes, Huge lifeless bodies will be seen to bear multitudes of men forcibly to the destruction of their lives. Da Vinci did have the idea that we could draw lessons from nature and apply them to machines and then make them that much more powerful. He knew about canals, he knew about how to manage water. He did so for um, civic purposes, but he also used it for military purposes. Perhaps influenced by the times, his own war machines, and haunted by visions of drowning and natural disaster, Leonardo described catastrophes that prophesied mankind's doom. The swollen waters gyrate in the lake that contains them, and with eddying vortices percussively strike diverse objects and leap into the air with muddy spume. Leonardo described it vividly, visually. The description of and the warning of what happens to what may happen to humanity if humanity does not respect um, the prime mover. All round may be seen venerable trees uprooted and stripped by the fury of the winds. Leonardo's prophecies, most of them, are written in the 1490s. They're like riddles. You know, you would prophesy something that was going to happen, and then at the end, the punchline would kind of prick the bubble, as it were. The great artist often recited these riddles in public for his rich sponsor, the Duke of Milan. They were intended as a form of entertainment, but Leonardo's cryptic prophecies actually startled and frightened his listeners. Little children will be taken from the arms of their mothers and thrown to the ground and then torn to pieces. They're literary productions, but they're not devoid of real passion. When he tells about prophecies about destruction brought by weapons, um, they're clearly felt. The mournful shouts will be heard, tortured and despoiled and left at the end naked and motionless. What might have been Leonardo's true motive in telling these riddles? There's always a sense of reasoning in Leonardo's prophecies. And there's also often a moral and ethical reading to them. Even if he himself explained that the prophecies could be described as brain teasers. Almost as if he, the author of them, was a madman. It will seem to men that they see strange destruction in the sky. It will look as though flames fly up into the sky and flee in terror down from it. There remains in Leonardo the concept of violence, which could be the explosion of nature. And in the cosmos, he is conscious of the energies that could be incited to cause ruin. Whatever Leonardo's expectations of man causing his own demise, his interpreters say he believed that a cataclysmic end of the world was certain. That our annihilation would come by the same force that created the Earth. And it would destroy mankind. The concept of balance was fundamental for Leonardo. The balance between forces, energies, situations, elements which comprise the surrounding world. When this balance is broken, there is a risk of devastation. The explanation of this belief may be secretly encoded within Leonardo's art. Leonardo had this interesting attitude towards the natural world. He felt that it was, in a sense, pent-up power which 
was at any moment liable to burst and destroy everything utterly. The record of Leonardo's life suggests that he could not repress these apocalyptic visions, but they manifested in his work. What, if anything, is embedded in the Mona Lisa, arguably the greatest painting of all time? And could it predict our demise? And what of his other seminal work, St. John the Baptist? Will Leonardo's masterworks actually unlock the riddles contained within his doomsday prophecy? Leonardo da Vinci may have been haunted since his youth by recurring images of natural disaster and man's inhumanity to man. Some believe he expressed his fears in seemingly prophetic writings that told of a coming watery apocalypse. He wrote, And fragments of mountains already scoured bare by the torrents, falling into those torrents and choking their valleys until the swollen rivers overflow and submerge the wide lowlands and their inhabitants. These profound warnings of natural disaster flooded his art. Leonardo is interested in big destruction. Uh, it fascinates him and, and appalls him at the same time. Was he trying to communicate to us in the 21st century, even as he obscured his message behind symbols and allegory? Some believers of prophecy cite the frequency of violent storms like Hurricane Katrina and earthquakes such as the one off the coast of Sumatra in 2004 as proof that Leonardo's warnings are now coming true. In Leonardo's early paintings, experts point to his use of deformity and grotesque human shapes. To them, this perhaps foreshadows his fear of the power of nature to destroy mankind. Clearly, Leonardo was exploiting his deep and expanding knowledge of anatomy through cutting up dead bodies acquired by potentially sacrilegious activity. Dissecting cadavers would have connected him with death. He would have been sort of familiar with its forms. He would have seen death at an early age too, more aware of death than perhaps we are these days. But I think he was interested in it again from a, should we say, a scientific point of view. Leonardo's morbid fascination with death encouraged him to search within the bodies of the dead for clues. Clues to the very nature of death itself. Bodies without souls will, with their judgments, give us rules teaching us how to die well. In his work, he was driven by an obsessive quest for knowledge about the very basis of life and death. Leonardo would perform secret autopsies, attempting to make deeper connections between the physical forces of nature and man's place in it. Leonardo was interested in discovering the root of things, where things actually originated from. He looked inside the human body, literally. He dissected the human body and opened the head. It really started the idea of reverse engineering the human body not just to look inside and see what was there, but actually try to figure out how it worked and then use that, these biologically inspired paradigms, as inspiration to create machines and technology. But Leonardo had to exercise extreme discretion. In his day, human dissection was considered wrong and in some instances, illegal. Taking a body to pieces, according to the church, was not acceptable, as the Catholic Church believed that our body would then exist after life, and imagining having a body fragmented in the afterlife was not something that was acceptable. Judging by the fine precision of his drawings, Leonardo devoted long hours to this bloody pursuit. He would dissect fetuses in the wombs of dead mothers, carving up old bodies until he would become exhausted. What might have been Leonardo's ultimate goal? Was he searching for the convergence of man and nature, two forces in harmony rather than at odds? Leonardo had a global view of the world. The world outside us wasn't separated from what went on inside our bodies. And in fact, it was incredibly useful for him as he observed nature very carefully to make comparisons and analogies between what went on in the body of the earth 
as he called it, and what went on in the body of man. To Leonardo, just as the human body was made up of flesh and bones, veins and blood, so was the earth made of soil, rock, rivers and water. And he saw the circulation inside the human body and compared that to the circulation of the water inside the body of the earth. Did he conclude that just as the spilling of blood could kill the body of a man, so could the flow of tidal waves and extreme weather destroy our living earth? He wrote, He who will give us nourishment and light will come down in a rush from the sky. And so to convey and yet hide these beliefs, Leonardo encoded everything he knew into his paintings. Through composition, texture, style, color, even brush strokes. The fate of humanity was sealed in his canvases. I think he, along with probably everyone else living at the time, couldn't possibly imagine a situation where peace reigned. And from that perspective, you would be desperately looking for some final end to this chaos. Haunted by this knowledge, he was compelled to reproduce the Earth's chaotic nature in his art. For example, in Leonardo's Last Supper, in the background there are three openings, three windows, and the number three can serve symbolically or symbolical reference to the Trinity and so on, with Christ, the head of Jesus, actually in the painting, filling the middle window. And so that's functioning symbolically in, in that fashion. As to whether there are hidden ones, they must be hidden for good reason. Leonardo produced three paintings in particular that were so important to him he kept them nearby until the end of his life. Mona Lisa, the Virgin and Child with Saint Anne, and Saint John the Baptist. What clues to Leonardo's vision of apocalypse are concealed in each of these celebrated paintings? These are deeply philosophical paintings. He'd always been interested in painting as more than painting, as conveying knowledge and understanding. Mona Lisa, in a sense, looks like a simple picture, but we forget how staggeringly revolutionary this is. First of all, she looks at us, which is very daring for a woman, and she reacts, she smiles. So you're almost bound to say, what is this person thinking about? The mountains on the left look unstable, they're being undermined. There are rivers at work, there's a high lake and a low lake. And at some point that high lake is going to break through and it's going to cascade through the landscape, so it may be flooded. The coming floodwaters are visualized in the swirling locks of her hair and the folds of her gown, a characteristic Leonardo repeated throughout his artwork. Geologic upheaval threatens to surge right over Mona Lisa. One wonders, you know, what is that doing there? Art historians tend to interpret it as perhaps Leonardo's way of bringing out some other aspect of Mona Lisa, the sitter's character, but um, that's only our attempt to explain why it's there in the first place. Were these religious allegories, as some believe, Hidden clues, warning of coming disaster? Not everyone agrees, but another painting, The Virgin and Child with St. Anne, seems to push similar calamitous ideas further. There are related themes being explored. Now, St. Anne in The Virgin Child and St. Anne is like St. John, she knows the mysteries. The child is embracing the lamb, which is sacrifice. It's a sacrificial animal, therefore it prefigures Christ's sacrifice on behalf of mankind. So she is supervising this little spiritual drama. This little spiritual drama, Mankind's Salvation, is also sitting perilously close to the edge of a cliff. Leonardo is perhaps depicting mankind teetering at the brink of annihilation. But there's more. His final painting of St. John the Baptist makes good use of the swirling whirlpool curls that had become a virtual trademark. Surrounded by darkness, St. John's long hair tumbles down, engulfing him in what could be torrents of raging water. 
Whenever Leonardo looked at phenomena, he always thought of something else. So when he looks at water, he thinks of hair curling or vice versa. And this appears repeatedly. Finally, St. John's upraised finger may point to the only way out. St. John, of course, is the person who announces that one is to come. The supreme spiritual force being is going to be represented by Christ on earth. He's smiling at you and he's saying something is to come inexplicable and amazing. Has Leonardo hidden in his final three paintings his own definition of the Trinity? A depiction of the creation, natural balance, and the destruction of the world. Did he perhaps foresee our modern dilemma, where humanity itself appears headed for disaster? Not everyone agrees. He was almost a director who imagined an apocalyptic end of the world. And so he was drawn to the extremely artistic vision for that. They are dealing with aspects of Leonardo's vision about how we understand the world and how we know there is a force outside the world, even if we don't know really what it is. In the latter years of his life, perhaps still haunted by frightful visions of man's extinction, Leonardo began his great apocalyptic finale, a series of drawings ominously titled The Deluge. These dire illustrations depict tumultuous waves, gales, thunderstorms, and great floods washing away the world. We had an enormous respect for nature's force. And of course, in the era of tsunamis and so on, this is exactly what we're still reminded of, that for all our hubris and thinking we are masters of the world or masters of the universe, we are not. Leonardo's visions mirror one of the Bible's most contentious texts, the Book of Revelation. And there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the whole moon became as blood, and the stars of the heavens fell unto the earth. Together with desperate warnings written in his journals, Leonardo perhaps embedded his final somber prophecy of global destruction in the deluge. What encrypted messages might lie within these images to reflect a final deluge to come? Leonardo da Vinci's prophecies seem to predict a horrible deluge wiping out mankind. Is it coincidence that they reflect the natural disasters today that scientists fear will intensify over the next 40 years? How is it possible that Leonardo predicted today's rising waters, a byproduct of our global warming? For interpreters of his work, Leonardo's obsession with watery destruction, as evidenced in his most acclaimed paintings, takes on sinister significance. His series of drawings entitled The Deluge appear strangely prophetic in their visions of the end of days. Circa 1482, Leonardo wrote, The highest mountains, although they are far from the seashores, will drive the sea out of its place. The reason why Leonardo created his final deluge drawings has remained a mystery for over 400 years. They were not sketches to prepare for a painting or any other known purpose. Were these images of waterborne disaster his final warning to the world he would leave behind and we would eventually inhabit? Leonardo's ideas, I think, come from thinking about the Christian tradition and the deluge, the biblical deluge, which apparently flooded the whole earth. Some suggest that after years confronted with man's diabolic nature, his brutality and savage instincts, Leonardo foresaw God's judgment coming in the form of a flood, one much like the flood described in the Bible that punished man's sins during Noah's time. Leonardo represented in the flood images something both physical and something extremely symbolic, an unpredictable despair. 
The drawings are absolute. He used black on black, lost the colors, and accentuated this extreme vision. Earlier in life, Leonardo was aware of the biblical Great Flood. According to the Bible, only Noah, his family, and their ark full of animals survived this deluge that covered the entire planet. Land reappeared very slowly above the waves. To comprehend the idea of oceans high enough to cover mountains, Leonardo conjured up what scientists today call the theory of plate tectonics. Leonardo's chief evidence the age of the Earth were what we would call fossils. He could see that there were strata on high lands, on mountains, fossils of uh, marine creatures, particularly shells, of course, which is what was preserved. In the 16th century, it was popular belief that the rising oceans of the great biblical flood carried these fossils to the mountaintops. Leonardo rejected that idea. He believed the Earth was much older and more volatile than anyone imagined. He said there's evidence that there must have been multiple big changes, multiple deluges, multiple liftings, multiple collapses in the body of the Earth to give this array of things. Leonardo wrote, All the elements will be seen mixed together with a great disturbance, running now to the center of the Earth, now to the sky. Sometimes from east to west, and similarly from this hemisphere to the other. So he could see this vast bending and collapsing and rising of the Earth. It's not exactly plate tectonics in the, in the modern system, but what he shared with the modern vision is the fact that vast, vast movements are occurring. These are not local, they're global. In his deluge sketches, the great visionary depicted gale force winds sweeping away armies, tidal waves washing away navies, torrents pouring down on whole cities, a world unraveling with earthquakes and oceanic displacement. The elements, far from being in their stable position, are as unstable as they could be. You've even got rocks in the air in an extraordinary apocalyptic way. So this is the elements at their most extreme. Human beings are very, very small. They're almost non-existent in comparison with the forces of nature. Though these images are terrifying in their own right, they become even more grisly in the light of Leonardo's writings. All the waters dashing on their shore seem to be battling them with the blows of drowned bodies. Leonardo's warnings on what might happen to the world and to human beings if they didn't respect the balance of the elements was enforced both by his very effective words and the visual rendering of the deluge. It's enough to look at the drawings in detail and just almost scan over the various details and read Leonardo's words and his prophecies. Certainly, these are the fruits of a final meditation, these images of the deluge. Many fear this cycle of destruction by the forces of nature is dramatically increasing in our time. They regard Leonardo's deluge as images of our future. Are melting ice caps and global warming once again raising the level of ocean waters? just as Leonardo da Vinci's drawings depicted. Some believe Leonardo da Vinci was a genius prophet warning our generation of a massive flood-like catastrophe. According to them, a close examination of his apocalyptic deluge reveals he accurately predicted disaster in our present age. These intense works were the last Leonardo completed, his final legacy. Should we accept this theory? Are these drawings proof of yet another convergence? One last clue that points to our current environmental crisis. Is this an example of the Nostradamus effect? You see the whole world of Leonardo that comes together, typically at the end of his life, 
so that the prophecy, in a way, is the realization of what he had been observing since his childhood. He wrote, Among irremediable and destructive terrors, the inundations caused by rivers in flood should certainly be set before every other dreadful and terrifying movement. Every year, warnings by scientists of the consequences of global warming and geologic upheaval grow more dire. Sea levels have increased by one inch over the last 10 years, and they are expected to grow by three feet over the next century. Yet the Earth continues to deteriorate. The Atlantic Ocean is spawning hurricanes with increasing violence and frequency. And in the Pacific, the deadliest tsunamis on record have flooded vast areas. Scientists are increasingly concerned that this worldwide inundation will become much worse. But most are at a loss to fully understand why. The mud will be so deep that men will walk above the trees in their villages. If you think of a man who was searching obsessionally about how nature worked, what made things move, what made things die, what made things uh, begin and end, it's understandable that he might be, at the end of his life, thinking about the end of what he had looked at in the beginning. Interpreters say Leonardo's last works point to the two paths open to humanity. His final painting, John the Baptist, offers hope amid a watery deluge, hinted at in the saint's hair and robes. The saint smiles with proud wisdom and points to heaven, showing the path to God and salvation. But Leonardo's final deluge sketches show the exact opposite. A world out of balance, nature in chaos, and our entire planet possibly under the threat of another great biblical flood. The mournful shouts will be heard, and the loud cries, the hoarse and feeble voices of those who will be tortured and despoiled and left at the end naked and motionless. Crippled by a stroke in his final days, the elderly Leonardo became a melancholy figure, plagued by violent visions of the future. He attempted to organize and pass down his life's work, but a great deal became scattered and sold. Much of his art and writing disappeared and is still missing today. Perhaps more prophecies of Leonardo da Vinci are awaiting discovery. A majority of Leonardo's inventions have been realized in the 500 years since his death. But what of his visions of a global deluge? What would the master think of the extreme instability of our world today? children will be seen to be torn apart in their own homes. What would he think about our recent economic collapse? Invisible coins will lead to the triumph of many who spend them. And perhaps the death of mankind. Innumerable lives will be extinguished and innumerable holes will be made over the earth. I think that the darkness of it is an intensity that he had, which we should respect. We should always think about what begins and what ends and how it ends. Leonardo da Vinci was a visionary. Hindsight today proves that he was amazingly perceptive. Will we change our ways? Or is humanity now hurtling toward a horrific end of days? 
exactly as Leonardo depicted.